Hi, quick clip before we start. Um, as you can see, I always film by my window to get the natural light. And today the sun actually wants to be out today. So it's like doing this thing on my face and it's just not working out for me. So instead, we're gonna be filming from the opposite angle, which is my desk, um, from here. And as you can see, it's kind of bare, kind of barren, um, except for this lovely ad, fake ad. Um, so if you're wondering why, that's why, that's it. All right, on with the show. Hey, it's Ali. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are talking about Halloween specials. Now, I asked you guys, thanks for all of your input. I sent out a Google form. If you want to be a part of the next Google form that goes out, please check uh, my social medias, my community page. Also, you got to like, like and subscribe because if you don't subscribe, then you're not going to see the community post. So you got to subscribe. Anyway, um, I asked you guys, uh, what is your favorite or what you think to be the best Halloween special out there? And I got a couple of responses, you know, and I watched through them. Some of them I had already seen and we're going to rank them today. So let's go do that. If at any time you like this video, please give a like and subscribe because I make videos like this all the time and let's get into it okay so i made this tier list this nice little tier list i'm recording my screen i didn't need to do that but i made this nice little tier list over here um ignore the fact that there are like three different like tiers over here <laughs> it repeats a couple of times because i had a hard time bringing in a couple of photos and so i had to re-add all of the photos like two times so there's it's it's repeats like three times on here um we're gonna get this out of the way right now jennifer's body it's one of the ones on here i'm gonna put it at classic now it's a movie it it's it's a movie it's not a halloween special so i'm not gonna talk too much about it because it is a halloween special and not a movie it's a movie and not a halloween special sorry <laughs> but anyway yeah she it's jennifer's body if you don't know what jennifer's body is about it's about this girl was she a succubus it's megan fox and I think she just kills a bunch of men in the movie. And it's very like female rage, female power, like that type of shit. It's really, really good. And even though it has like all of the tropes of like your traditional horror movie, if you've seen Scream, you know, like all of those tropes and stuff, it's still a really good movie. <laughs> it's really entertaining. And Megan Fox is hot. Moving on. Uh, also, the other one on here that is not a special, it's a movie. Well, it's a special, but it's a movie. So, you know. Anyway, it's um, The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. She goes in, um, because I rewatched her yesterday just for the fuck of it, and then I realized it's not a TV special. Well, it is a TV special. I need to stop using the word TV special. It's not a special from a show. It's just its own movie. And... <laughs> The reason why it goes in, um, it, no, this movie, they did a lot of practical effects and I will always give, well, they did practical effects and VFX, but the practical effects in this movie, like any stunt that Victoria Justice, like her character had to do, which her name is Jordan in the movie, whatever stunt that she had to do, her stunt double was just always very obvious to the point where I literally thought it was a man for a second. Like some of these stunts, <laughs> And then, of course, when she turned into a werewolf, the contacts that they gave her for her turning into a werewolf, like, is like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah, really weird movie. That movie is basically about uh, Jordan and her little brother and her dad. They all live together. Their mom recently passed away. And even more recently than that, their great uncle passed away who lived in Romania. And let me tell you, they did a really shitty job of making it seem like they were in Romania. Uh, so they go to Romania because they inherit a castle and Jordan, Jordan, Victoria Justice's character, steps on a piece of glass and that glass had werewolf's blood in it for some reason he turns into a werewolf now in this movie i just want to talk about a little bit of discrepancies in this movie they talk about like the three ways you can get turned into a werewolf number one is like a via a werewolf bite two is like you turn uh you have it in your heritage and three is like getting infected by the blood and it is said at the end of the movie that they have it in their heritage because their great uncle could turn into a werewolf. What? So like, was that the re like her brother then turns it? So was it only a male thing? I, I they might have said this in the movie because her brother turns into a werewolf at the end of the movie, but she also turns into a werewolf. I, I don't, I don't get it. And also, if they never went to Romania and her brother had just turned fourteen, which is like the cutoff date to turn into a werewolf, 
don't know what that's about if they had never said that he was gonna turn into a werewolf and they never went to romania would he have just turned into a werewolf in the city that they were in and then what would they would have done also you think their mom knew the mom's dead though but like anyway this goes in um because there was some very interesting to say the least things going on in this movie so it goes in um also it was a movie not a show okay so now we're getting into the actual uh things we're gonna talk about the spongebob episode the first spongebob halloween episode this episode is a certified classic now let me tell you why sponge spongebob spongebob has some really good halloween episodes um also just some really good episodes in general like every episode with the flying dutchman was really really good but specifically season one everyone knows season one of spongebob golden age of spongebob right go like seasons one through like five i think are the golden age of spongebob the first halloween episode it's a it's a classic okay spongebob is worried about whether or not he'll be perceived as scary already off the bat talk about character development in a show that doesn't really have character development character development this episode shows that spongebob really really you know he's perceived as a kid him and patrick they're literally called kids when they ding dong ditch that like guy and they run away and he was like oh do you kids want your candy supposed to be a kid like his age is never shown but worse anyway irrelevant irrelevant can you tell him flying off the cuff today irrelevant so patrick decides he's going to shave spongebob down to be a circle and at first you're thinking okay because they've done this before in Spon well after in spongebob they've done this after where they've shaved spongebob into a bunch of different shapes before they've done that after this episode has aired but like when they do it in this episode like the twist ending in this episode that scares the flying dutchman having spongebob with his brain out like it's just a classic it makes me laugh also side note the clip that i found of this on youtube they put a laughing track on it and it was the most jarring experience like ever speaking of laughing tracks where they don't belong we have the halloween episode of the sweet life of zach and cody at least the i think this is the is this the first halloween episode i'm not sure is the halloween episode where they're in sweet 613 i think and there's a ghost in there they fuck with zach basically and they try to scare him um this also goes in certified classic duh duh do we come on now certified classic so this episode <laughs> scared me a lot as a kid oh this episode like literally scared me as a kid i remember every time it would come on especially i remember explicitly esteban's part where he gets like possessed by the ghost like that part well possessed possessed in quotes when he gets possessed by the ghost like that part used to scare the absolute shit out of me and then i rewatched it like literally right before filming this and there's a laughing track throughout all of it like it's supposed to be funny but i thoroughly remember me as a kid as a little kid being scared to death and i just heard that laughing track and i got kind of mad i was like what are you are you laughing like i am like a little kid scared to death especially when maddie got pulled by that chair into the darkness like i was genuinely i remember being so scared of that episode i uh, and of course it all turns out to be a prank at the end and then the ghost turns out to be actually real it doesn't matter as a kid that was real to me that was real to me okay and i was scared to fucking death so hearing that laughing track it was like it was mocking me it was fucking mocking me hearing that laughing track okay I, esteban scared me he did I, I like thoroughly thought that man was possessed for like the rest i was like oh my god he can speak to spirits oh my god oh my god <laughs> keeping up with the live action uh, ones we have the that's so raven episode called don't have a cow which is basically where raven and chelsea yeah the chelsea is the best friend's name they try to get into this party that they weren't invited to for some weird reason uh, they never really explained they just like oh the girl hates me since the fourth grade and it's like okay why why though anyway they try to get into this party and they sneak in and they get well no 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 they try they concoct a potion and that potion makes them popular question mark i'm going off of my memory here uh, that potion makes them popular they get invited to the party and then they have a costume and they go overboard because that's literally every that's a raven episode is like you take a little take a lot and then it backfires on raven that happens every episode so they go overboard with it they get into the party they have really cool costumes they have hooves and cow ears and i think cow noses they're cows i like this goes in the um category definitely where is she 
This definitely goes in the um category. One of the weirder episodes of That's a Raven, to be sure. That's a Raven has some weird ass shit going on. But that, I just, uh, oh, the cow. Oh. And then I think they turn into full cows. Like, it's all because her, like, Chelsea's, like, save a cow pin, like, dropped into the potion. One would think they would turn into a pin, no? And not a cow. But I digress, I digress. Um, yeah, the whole pin, yeah, them turning into cow, like, it, mm, Mm. also a side note the, the 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 adults her dad and her mom go trick-or-treating because like the whole thing is like Corey wants to go trick-or-treating with his friend and not with his dad anymore but then like he's like i still want to go trick-or-treating so him and the mom go trick-or-treating someone explain that to me how was it like and i don't think they ever like go i don't know if that's a b plot of the episode i can't remember but like i just remember that and i was like looking back on it i'm like that's a little weird your grown-ass man going trick-or-treating without a child it's like trying to go into chuck e cheese by yourself you know that's illegal side note side note you know that's illegal it is illegal to go into chuck e cheese well not illegal but it's not like they don't allow it you cannot go into chuck e cheese over the age of 13 but under the age of 18 without a child or a parent present so if you're between the ages of like 13 and like 18 you can't go into chuck e cheese by yourself which like makes me think do, if you're under the age of 13 can you go into chuck e cheese by yourself but like you can't go into chuck e cheese by yourself we were so conf i remember this because i had a bag of coins of Chuck E. Cheese. This is so irrelevant. But I had a bag of Chuck E. Cheese coins and we were like, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese. We were like 15, 16 at the time. We were like, fuck it, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese. We went to Chuck E. Cheese and they were like, no, we're not letting you in. Fucking rude. That's why you out of business, you fucking FNAF wannabe. Rounding out the live action portion of this, we have the Hannah Montana Torn Between Two Hannahs episode where basically her cousin, I think, comes in and tries to become her weird and the, I, I, I don't have much to say about this episode so it's also gonna go in um because it's i the weird part of this and the reason why i'm in um is because her dad number one didn't believe her and number two her dad also didn't have his phone on him your daughter is a mega pop star who leads a double life why don't you have your phone with you at all times in case your daughter needs to call you you're a single father why don't you have your phone on you at all times yeah, why don't you have your why don't you have your phone on you? Please explain. Please explain. Please explain. Uh it, like that was the end of the episode. It's like, oh, and what did we learn? I don't like like I know it's a kid's show, so it's like, oh, the 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 daughter is teaching the father a lesson, but you didn't have your phone on you? I don't have much to say about that episode. Also, it was really funny the twist at the end when they tried to decide between the two Hannahs who's the real Hannah, and they're like, oh, we gotta kiss. Uh, I don't remember Mitchell Musso's character's name, but we have to kiss uh, Mitchell Musso. And the other girl's like, ew. And the other girl's like, yes. And it's like, oh, the one who said ew is Hannah. I thought that was cute. Anyway, moving on. Okay, sorry. I forgot about the the other movie on here that got suggested. Whoever suggested this, I, I don't know. I, we didn't read the prompt, apparently. They said Monster House. Monster House goes and did not pass the vibe check. Now... <laughs> Should not pass the vibe check. There's a reason it did not pass the vibe check. Talk about things that scared me as a kid. Monster House scared the absolute living fuck out of me as a kid. I, I like, I didn't. Oh, that movie. Oh, the animation, the plot, the house itself. That house was scary. Uh, scary. Speaking of scary animation, a scary godmother. Now, listen, I know that back in the day, everyone was experimenting with 3D animation and making full length feature films out of 3D animation. This is unsettling. <laughs> there's a lot about the, like, there's no consistent art style in this movie. Like there is with the monsters, which I appreciate, but the kids, like it's so inconsistent. Like it's, at first I was like, oh, they made the kids, like the bad kids have like no, like, corneas or whatever the fuck the white part of your eye is called they just had pupils and i was like why and i was like is every kid like this and i was like okay if every kid's like that then it's a design choice no but then the like main girl comes in the little girl and she you can see all her eyes she has big like anime eyes and you're like okay i guess because she's young but then the kids at the end of the movie get really scared by all the monsters and their eyes bug out of their head and you can see the whites of their eyes and it's freaky it's it's unsettling and i'm like no no, I'm good. I'm good, actually. Like, it, like I'm gonna go back to being a pupil because I just, oh, I don't. Also, another movie that used to scare me as a kid was Coraline. 
I have yet to actually rewatch. I don't think I've seen Coraline all the way through because of how much it scared me as a kid. Not even joking. Not even joking. Anyway, yeah, Scary Godmother gets a... She goes in um. <laughs> Scary Godmother definitely goes in um. I'm sorry. I know it's a classic. I know a whole bunch of people who love this movie. It was actually put in the form multiple times. So I'm very, very sorry to everyone who actually likes it. I never saw it as a kid. Is it a childhood staple? Not for me. Not for me. I'm sorry. All right, next we have Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase. Out of all the Scooby-Doo movies, I, I don't, I don't, I, the form is completely anonymous, so I have no idea who actually, like, submitted this, but out of all the Scooby-Doo movies, <laughs> Cyber Chase is the movie, like, obviously, Scooby-Doo, Halloween, go together, they go together like peanut butter and jelly, but out of all the Scooby-Doo movies, you said Cyber Chase, and I don't know why, so this goes in um, just for the pure, like, it's a good movie, don't get me wrong, I love, Sco I love, like, most Scooby-Doo movies, but, like, Cyber Chase? <laughs> Out of like all the other movies? You know what you should have? Uh, you know what? Technically, you couldn't have. I was going to say you should have submitted the live action Scooby Doo movies because I love those movies. I love those movies. But that wouldn't have been related to the show. So never mind. But still, out of all of the movies, <laughs> we chose Scooby Doo Cyber Chase. All right. Sure. <laughs> okay. So for this one, you're going to have to bear with me. We have two separate Monster High things on here. Now, Monster High did have a show, so this counts as a special. Um, the Monster High animated movies? Mwah. Mwah. Delicioso. Mm. Uh, amazing, amazing. Freaky just got fabulous. Amazing. Monster High itself is such an amazing concept, and they took that shit and threw it in the fucking trash. The live action... I, I haven't even seen the live action, like monster high movie and i i saw the trailer that's all i needed to see i don't you had one job the plot can literally be anything you had one job on costuming that was your only job it is what they are known for and you failed you failed so badly i in makeup makeup and costume that's all you had to get right that's where your budget should have went. And it didn't go there. Why? And oh, don't even get me started on the new line of Monster High dolls. This is not a doll review channel, so I'm not going to even talk about it. I'm not going to even talk about it. But one goes in certified classic. Take a wild guess at which one that is. Yeah, certified. Uh -oh. Certified classic. All of the Monster I haven't even seen all the Monster High movies. But I know, I know I've seen a lot of them, but I haven't seen all of them. But certified motherfucking classic. New York, New York? Yeah, didn't think so. And then the fucking Monster High live action movie goes into did not pass the vibe check. I didn't even watch it all the way through. I, I didn't watch it at all, actually. But it didn't even pass the vibe check for me to even watch it. Ant Farm episode, Halloween episode, gets a certified classic because guess who did know what the fuck they were doing with the motherfucking uh, costuming and makeup? Ant Farm. I don't know if it was because China Ann McClain was the, like, protagonist of the show, but, like... I, they have never done China and McLean dirty in terms of the way that she looks in like y'all see descendants. Yep. Yeah, they have never done her dirty and that alone makes this a classic. That alone. The Medusa hair alone classic. If Medusa if Medusa in the new Percy Jackson show isn't fucking black with dread braids something we're going to have an issue. A Rick Royden, we're going to have an issue. I know you're working on that show. We're gonna have an issue. Next Halloween special we are talking about actually comes from Channel Federator, the same people who produce B and Puppy Cat, or at least did. I don't, they still do. They still produce B and Puppy Cat. Um, and this one's called The Summoning. And this was when Channel Federator was releasing a bunch of pilots on their channel, a bunch of cartoon pilots. This one specifically, this. This is going to go in classic. It, it was a really interesting pilot. It reminded me a lot of Summer Camp Island. If you guys know that show, like it had the same art style. I feel like the writing was a lot of the same too. The voices also sounded the same. It might just be the accents, but the voices sounded a lot the same. So maybe it has something to do. Maybe it's like the same type of people were, who worked on that, worked on Summer Camp Island. Um, I miss Summer Camp Island. I got to rewatch that show. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it was very cute. I liked the idea of it a lot. Um, I don't think it ever got picked up into a full show, unfortunately. I wish it kind of had. Maybe it turned into Summer Camp Island. <laughs> but like, yeah, I wish it had got turned into a full thing because it's actually really cute. I like the aesthetic of it a lot. 
there's no reason why the Tumblr girlies wouldn't have eaten this up. And there's no reason why the Tumblr girlies today wouldn't also eat this up. So, uh, you know, if it's out there in the ether somewhere, someone let me know. And, like, you know, I'll watch it if it ever gets turned into a full show. We have Tales of... Actually, this actually goes into it needs its own video. This is Tales from the Park, which is the Halloween specials for regular shows. Specifically, the person who re uh, recommended this, they recommended number three, which is the one about the Jebediah townhouse, um, and the pumpkin smashing one, which I think actually did really scare me as a kid. And what was the third one? There's a third one. Oh, the haunted bed. Regular show itself is already a horror show. <laughs> like no real Re regular show regular show is so unnerving already at times a lot so it is no the halloween episodes uh, oh they just they first of all they go hard the halloween episodes always go hard they're always just so absurd and so funny and so weird and just regular show i think we all can agree regular show was adult swim for kids it was it just it was it pretty much was i remember when the first episode came out and i was watching it and rigby went how in the h are we gonna fix this s and my mom went what are you watching and this is like 2010 and i was like 10 years old yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. but yeah the regular show deserves its own video and maybe able to get one one day if i ever rewatch the entire show but tales from the park was it was always fun it was always fun to watch tales from the park it had its own name it was fancy it had its own little event it was cute this specific episode the pumpkin smashing episode specifically i think is my favorite out of all of them because it's freaky it like honestly they were like oh muscle man your 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 story sucks and i was like huh what do you mean your story like what i felt like muscle man's story was the best story out of all of them uh, maybe that's just me maybe that's just me anyway uh on to the next one speaking of certified classics that deserve their own video we have the codename kids next door halloween episode it needs its own video codename kids next door needs its own video and i will one day because i i almost fell down a rabbit hole of rewatching kids codename kids next door when i was watching this episode specifically i love wally so much i love number three <laughs> i mean i'm remembering his number I mean, we're not remembering his number. Anyway, um, <laughs> I loved I loved his character so much. He was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters. So this certified classic from me. Um, and then I watched like a couple episodes after the fact. Oh my god, this episode and the uncool episode, which was about the trading cards and the zombies. It just so like Conan Kissick's door is so creative. I don't know how they like. It's just so creative. The kids are so creative like when i talk about something i'm not gonna get too into it but when i talk about something that like encapsulates imagination codename kiss next door is one of those shows like it just encapsulates a child's imagination and they just made being a kid so cool like i remember watching that like as a kid and i was like oh my god i'm like the coolest thing ever like obviously i wasn't making what they were making in codename kiss next door but like i wanted to be in that world so badly because i thought they were so cool and my dad also liked that show so it's it's a dad certified classic and one day it'll give its own show we have the episode the creeps from adventure time goes in needs its own video adventure time also needs its own video but certified creeps certified creeps the creeps that episode oh that episode one of my favorite episodes of the whole show the world building the character development oh finn's past lives oh god oh god that episode is so good and it scared me thoroughly as a kid it scared me in a way that like i feel like adventure time sometimes scared me in a way and, and unsettled me in a way that i still wanted to keep watching something like monster house or Coraline. when i went to go see specifically monster house i didn't want to keep watching i sat through the whole movie because we were in the movie theater but like i did not want to keep watching and Coraline, i haven't watched all the way through like i said so but like th this type like it unsettles me and it kind of scares me but in a way that's like i want to keep watching and maybe that's the comedy of it all but i, I just i kept wanting to watch and it's one of my favorite i think it's my that's a lie the next one is my favorite out of all of these but uh yeah so kudos to that episode it's such a good episode. if you haven't seen that episode like I, there if you're like i don't want to watch adventure time if you're like one of those people who's like it's too long i don't want to watch it don't even get me started on that shit a show's too long i don't want to watch it whatever um but specifically adventure time if you're like adventure time's too long i don't want to watch it i would implore you to go watch 
like these episodes like i have a set of episodes that you can watch because you can technically watch a lot of adventure time out of order like only like the last couple of seasons do you need to watch in order but the first like three seasons you can watch completely out of order and it won't even matter yeah so i would say like if you're not gonna watch adventure time if you don't know you're gonna like adventure time i would watch that episode the creeps really good episode really good episode all right next we have summer ween from gravity falls where do y'all think this is gonna go yeah that's right and it's it's in it needs its own video it needs its own video gravity falls bro i another episode that is like if you want a feel of what gravity falls is go watch that specific episode if nothing else that specific episode the character development in that episode there's an overarching like plot in uh i said adventure time in gravity falls about dipper and mabel growing up and especially how it's hitting mabel versus how it's hitting dipper and that dichotomy there between the two of them like with dipper the whole summer he cannot wait to grow up he wants to grow up so badly and that's like kind of like the b plot to like the a plot with all of the monsters and shit but the b plot of them like growing up mabel does not want to and she will always be a kid at heart and she does not really want to grow up she's clinging to the things that she liked as a kid and that's like her character development versus like dipper's character development where he's kind of too mature and it's like dude you're 13 calm down well he was 12 in the beginning and then he turned 13 so it's like calm down calm down calm down but that like shows it shows a lot of that in this episode same with like the monster i think the monster design in this episode was really really well done like the whole candy monster thing that thing also gave me the jeepers creepers when I was a kid watching this for the first time, it was thoroughly creepy. It didn't scare me too much, but it was still like pretty creepy. Um, and obviously the humor in Gravity Falls is unmatched, unmatched. I got like really serious commentary there for a second. We're gonna wrap this up <laughs> with one more. Um, and that is Over the Garden Wall. This got also recommended a couple of times and guess the fuck what, where it goes? It goes in the Over the Garden Wall section, which is my S tier. I didn't even actually explain you know, you know how this works. S tier to F tier. Y'all know how this works. Over the garden. Do I even need to explain? It's in its own section called Over the Garden Wall because it is better than all of these combined. This is the best TV special, Halloween TV special ever, 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 ever. Halloween, fall TV special ever. Over the Garden Wall has a permanent mark on my brain. A permanent mark on my brain. I don't think anything like Over the Garden Wall can encapsulate any type of aesthetic more than over the garden wall it doesn't matter what aesthetic it is like i i praise being puppy cat all the time for encapsulating a specific aesthetic like the pastel whatever lonely adulthood whatever aesthetic but over the garden wall takes that to 100. i don't maybe it's just because fall is my favorite season i may be biased because fall is my favorite season halloween is my favorite holiday but the way over the garden wall gets everything right every single little thing right i'm not gonna talk too much about it because over the garden wall i'm making an entire video about it it's gonna be the last video of this month be ready for that but it does literally everything right with the fall the characters the story all of it together helps the aesthetic along and that ooh, like because some some shows movies whatever they'll get the aesthetic right like the, the look and feel but then the story will kind of fall flat in that aesthetic department but when you have a story that also like helps with the aesthetic of everything like everything all the metaphors the tree metaphors the bird metaphor everything the pumpkin metaphors the cats everything all of it encapsulates together to this tell this entire long story there's so much to chew on there's the main story there's the metaphors there's literally the meta of it all it, i could go on and on and on about over the garden wall but this video is already too long because all i did was ramble this is what happens when i don't have an actual script anyway that yeah this is this is the list i know some of y'all gonna be mad about the ums i'm sorry <laughs> i really am sorry but i just some of these were weird some of these were really fucking weird thank you so much for watching all the way until the end especially if you did and thank you so so much for a thousand subscribers oh it's crazy I keep looking at that number and I'm like, that's really a thousand. That's crazy. That is so crazy. Thank you for everyone who like comments something. You guys are the ones that are helping me boost in the algorithm. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, be prepared. I got some really cool videos coming. I got some really cool videos coming. Next week is going to be... Yeah, next week. 
which will be the 21st, is going to be over, uh, not over the garden wall. Over the garden wall is the 28th. Next week, the 21st, when this video comes out on the 14th. The next week after that is the 21st, and that's when the Owl House Season 3 Part 1 special comes out. I've seen, I haven't seen the clips from NYCC, New York Comic Con, but I've seen screenshots. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm so ready, I'm so ready. I'm ready for my heart to be ripped out of my chest again. So yeah, be prepared for that, and then after that is the Over the Garden Wall video, and then we get into November, which I have some videos planned for that too. So be ready, be prepared for that. Thank you again so much for a thousand subscribers. Like no for real thank you <laughs> like thank you thank you so much thank you so much for guys for like hyping up my videos like i said i see you guys in the comments hyping up my videos you guys are <sniffs> share with a friend anyway thank you i've been talking for way too long now i love you all thank you and i'll see you in the next episode